All right, uh, next group is Timos, Demos, Demos. and we're the modern operating system for local government. So our mission statement is to increase participation in local government. And the, pro and the problem we're trying to identify is that local government election turnout nationwide has been less than 15%. Um, specifically in North Carolina, in the three biggest cities in the 2016 election, local voter turnout was less than 11.5%. And according to like the Greek status of democracy, this isn't a democracy since people aren't turning out. And this is a problem we're trying to address. So our target user can be represented in two personas. On the left, you have a single mother bogged down by bills and a child and so many other things taking up her bandwidth and time. And she doesn't have the time or bandwidth to attend town council meetings and really inform herself to be an informed citizen of a municipality. On the other side, you have my generation, the millennials, who are always plugged into a device. And the last thing they would like to do is sit in a three hour long town council meeting to inform themselves of these issues. However, these issues are the issues that impact their daily lives the most out of any level of government. And so the solution we've identified is twofold. So the first is takes on the old marketing motto of meeting people where they are. So the statistic is over 80% of people own a smartphone before they own a car. And then the other side is personalization. If you show an individual how these issues impact them individually and personalize the information you're giving them, they'll be much more inclined to consume the information and engage with it. This has been tested by Google, Facebook, etc. So we'll take you through a quick demo. Um, so this is what our app interface looks like right now. So you can log in through Google or Facebook, um, indicate what issues you care about specifically. So the information will be um, outputted in a way that's personalized for your case. Um, and then um, you can specify what you want your engagement to look at, look like. So this is, you know, abiding by that principle of meeting people where they at, where they're at. And then you can um, specify how you want to be updated. And so the screen on the um, rightmost screen, you can see um, that our content is mostly video content. So <coughs> millennials find that the most engaging. That's the trend now. This video is global citizen. They all use that platform. Um, and then below the video platform, because we like to think that people still read, um, is a um, article that goes into specifically that issue. And the issue uses the open data um, that we pull from Town of Chapel Hill data right now, um, uh, Board of Elections data, voter demographic, voter behavior, Title I schools, um, and housing patterns and trends. And then the real zinger is that you can provide feedback on the information you're getting. So this is, acts as a modern day technological forum or town council. And so not only can you um, interact with it on a, on, on a binary basis with a yes or no, you can leave comments um, on how specific issues impacting you specifically. So our revenue model is partnering with departments, specifically the communications department and the planning department of local governments and on a monthly subscription basis, kind of analyzing our data from the users in the community and then giving them like a dashboard that would present like insights, uh, feedback on what they're doing in the community and so forth. And then in the long term, licensing the engagement tool to nonprofits and other uh, issue advocacy organizations. So in constructing our app, we've done some competitive market um, analysis and Polco, based, and these are the um, people we've, things we've identified. Polco mostly does polling, so they don't really um, condense or package that information and deliver it in a way that is um, digestible to people, especially millennials um, or busy people. I, Citizen, um, works on the federal levels, and local <coughs> politics is where the, most of the policy that is crunched affects us more than we know. And then um, citizen draws from social media and Facebook, as we see as as we've seen as dangerous um, in the most recent election. So this is our team. We're undergrads at UNC, and kind of the differentiating factor on our platform compared to these other three is that personalization uh, <coughs> information. Uh, each user will see something else in their feed based on the demographic information that they give us and pre-selected interests. So each user will receive information that shows them how these issues impact them individually. And so our next steps is we have an MVP and we're working with our community partners in Chapel Hill to do some user testing and uh, get some feedback on the platform before we do a full scale launch in Chapel Hill in the coming months. Thank you. Thank you. I, I live in
at Chapel Hill. I can't wait to see this. Um, what, one thing I noticed is a lot of the, de the detailed data in there made me want to ask um, how much of your model depends upon very motivated users who are going to enter and even curate the content. What do you mean by curating content? Well, to keep it updated or keep people updated on how, I, I saw like the Rose, mm -hmm. Rosemary Street has three lives, you know. Yeah. Where does um, that come so from? our, on the back end, we do a lot of policy analysis and we're partnering with the, uh, the public policy department at UNC. Okay. And so our model as we scale is to start in cities where there's like a big university where we could partner with, so we get some motivated university students to kind of do the policy analysis. And we're constantly trying to find ways to speed up that process. So we're looking at a software called Angelo, uh, which is a policy analysis software. And we hope that will greatly increase our speed of being able to keep up with policy and analyze it to present to users. So from a, as far as commercialization is concerned, you say users. What do you mean by users uh, who are subscribed to this? Is this like I'm going to go and I'm downloading it and I'm paying a subscription fee? Or is this more city-based? Yeah, so I guess based? to differentiate our customer from our client, our client would be an issue advocacy organization in the local government who would be subscribing monthly for our data and the insights that we get. And then the user or the customer would be just a normal citizen um, who wants to inform themselves of the issues. And how, how does this integrate with the other mechanisms that are in place for engagement. So mm -hmm. if I'm a city or I'm a local government, why would I want to use your data as opposed to the other mechanisms that I have? So we integrate with Facebook and uh, other platforms where people are socially, um, so they can share our content via Facebook and then we kind of pull data from that as well to get more sentiment. Um, and then we can integrate with other data backend <coughs> platforms. Uh, we use a lot of open data, uh, like Poppy mentioned. So. So, um, who's been using all these videos? <laughs> um, our one per, a person on our team, Michael. Just for, just on the side but so, yeah. thinking about scale, mm -hmm. how are you going to reduce all these videos? Yeah, again, so our like vision for scale, I guess, is to have a video like communications team and to keep expanding that. Uh, we have a very strong media journalism school, and uh, just floating the idea out at the school, we had like. 15 people interested in a position on our team to help us produce content. And so I think the desire to participate in something like this is definitely there. Um, and then the other question is, so as far as action goes, it seems like very, right now it's very passive. I'm, as a user, consuming the, you know, the content from the videos, but how do you measure the actions that I take other than clicking a yes or a no, or maybe you know, just leaving a comment? Yeah, so we, our goal is to increase participation and one of the metrics we're using is uh, voter participation in local elections. So in Chapel Hill, we kind of analyzed that last election cycle, only 7% of Asians uh, in Chapel Hill voted versus 23% for whites. And so we're using that kind of as a metric that we can increase that. And then our partner organizations like the Rena Center and the Jackson Center in, uh, in Chapel Hill, they have 